Hi, it's Doug. Time for some more family history, uh, things I've learned using Ancestry. And in this video, I'm going to be doing an overview of the Barmores and um, learn some interesting things about them. Uh, I'll be going into depth, more in depth um, in later videos, but this is just going to be kind of an overview um, just to give an idea of the timeline and some of the places uh, where they lived. So to get there, we're going to be going through uh, my uh, maternal grandmother. Um, and so here's my generation, my mom, uh, mom and dad, William Lee and Julia May, mom's brothers and sisters, and then their mother, Gladys Roseman Bewley, or Barmore, her maiden name, uh, and my granddad, Wil uh, Wilbur Carl Bewley. Then uh, we open up Grandma's family, and uh, her parents, Charles H. Barmore and Gladys O. Benson. So Grandma's dates are 1917 to, to 2008, and then my great-granddad, Barmore, uh, 1881 to 1939. Um, and right now all I have is Kentucky uh, as far as places he lived. I know that I've heard stories about them living on the Ohio River and maintaining like a, a light on the river. And I was under the impression that that was on the, uh, maybe it was on the Kentucky side, Grayson County maybe. Um, so down the river from, you know, the little bit of the Ohio that, that borders Hardin County, so further west. Uh, my great-grandmother's name was Gladys O. Benson, and her dates are 1888 to 1957. So I didn't know either of my uh, great-grandparents uh, that are Barmores. I knew uh, a great-grandma Bush. I knew a uh, great-grandma and great-grandpa O'Bannon. Uh, and... Um, for quite a while, actually. So I kind of feel uh, let down that I that I didn't know uh, the Barmores or the Bewleys uh, as far as great-grandparents. Then we go back to my two-time great-granddad, that's John Barmore. And again, I have him born in Kentucky in 1852, passed away in 1928. And it says Saluda, or Jefferson, Indiana. Um, and so that that might be a road trip uh, to find two-time great-grandpa uh, Barmore's uh, headstone. My great, my two-time great-grandmother uh, Barmore, uh, her maiden name was Huff, Sarah Jane Huff. And um, I covered the Huffs. No, I haven't done that yet, right? Uh, that's one of the things I do want to be talk. I do want to talk about is... Uh, uh, the Huffs at some point. And uh, so anyway, and this is kind of a mystery. I haven't quite figured this out. There, according to Ancestry, there was a Sally Huff in the same generation as a Sarah Huff. And then I've seen Sarah Huff called Sally. So I'm trying to, and the dates don't line up, the headstone for uh, who I thought was my two-time great-grandmother, Huff. Um, I went to the Huff Cemetery on the Ohio River in Indiana, and that headstone I thought was Sarah Jane. The dates are not the same as what show up in Ancestry. So I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. It says she's buried, or says she died in Spencer County, Indiana, and that's where that cemetery is. So I have some more investigation to do uh, in that area. And we go back to my three-time great-grandfather, that's Nathaniel Dennis Barmore, and you see he's born in New York, uh, Genesee County, in 1827, passed away 1880 in Louisville. So he's the first Barmore to move from New York um, west and end up in Kentucky. And then we go back to, uh, and you'll notice we have the through lines, so DNA is confirming this. Uh, his wife, 
my three-time great-grandmother is Rowena Poreen, um, born in Bullock County, um, died in Bullock County. Um, and this family, I did a little research earlier, owned quite a bit of land just on the south side of Louisville. So um, again, that'll be another little, doing a little investigating. Um, they're buried in a family cemetery that's on private property. So I don't know that, that I could, can get to it. Um, I found it on Find a Grave and it's on the map. Um, nor are there pictures of their headstones um, on Find a Grave, but they are listed as being uh, both of them buried there. Then we go back uh, to my four time great grandfather, that's Dennis Barmore, uh, born in New York, and um, then died West Fort Crawford County, Indiana. And I found this cemetery as well. Um, this one I, I think I can get to, uh, has um, public access. He was born in 1800, passed away in 1870. Still have the through lines. And then my four-time great-grandmother, Esther Bad Babcock, uh, born in New York in 1805, passed away in West Fort Crawford, Indiana in 1876. Um, and they're both listed as being buried in that, that cemetery. And we go back to five-time great-granddad and grandma, Nathaniel Barmore, born in Rockland County, New York, died in Rockland County, New York, 18 or 1785 to 1870. And we'll just take a look at this profile pic. Um, and I've looked up where the cemetery is. It's north of New York City. Uh, and it is, uh, this is his monument, okay? North of New York City, along the Hudson River. Um, if you're familiar with, like, White Plains or Yonkers, New York, that's the area is in. Um, Nathaniel ran um, an ice company where they would harvest ice and then supply it to uh, people and businesses. And so uh, Knickerbocker Ice was the name of the company. So I think there'll be a video that'll probably just talk about uh, Nathaniel at one point, but evidently very well to do uh, up there in New York. All right, now let's go back. Um, and this is where uh, I had talked to some people about this, some of my family. Roxana Chapin. Uh, and the Chapin name, this is if you know Harry Chapin or Mary Carpenter Chapin, this is the same family. Uh, Roxana, if you go back through her line, we get to the deacon. Um, his first name is escaping me right now. Chapin, anyway, in Massachusetts. He was one of the founders of the city of Springfield, Mass, and was there very early. Uh, um, born in the late 1600s, lived into the 1700s. There's a statue in Springfield. I've, I've seen it. I saw it last, last uh, summer on a trip to New England. There is a statue that his great-grandson had done, uh, commissioned and put up in his honor. It's not of him personally, of course. His great grandson was the one that commissioned it, um, but it's called uh, the Puritan, um, and it's this—it's very imposing. This really big uh, bronze statue, uh, and it's everything you would imagine a Puritan would have, right? It's the big, tall hat, uh, the buckles on the shoes, the big cape, and the Bible in one hand, um, and a walking stick in the other. Um, so that is that connection is. Uh, my five-time great-grandmother, um, Roxana, is married to Nathaniel uh, Barmore. Then we go back another generation over Roswell Barmore. I do have a picture of his headstone. Uh, he's buried in New York um, and was born in New York. Roswell Marshall. 
In the Barmores, you'll see Nathaniel, Marshall, Dennis. You'll see those names just about every generation. Um, he was a Revolutionary War soldier. And uh, there's his headstone. Although it's not spelled the way this is spelled. Um, then... We get to Nathaniel Barmore, and he's born in New Jersey, according to the information I found, and then moved to uh, Rockland, New York. Don't have a whole lot of information on him. And his wife was Anna Mary Marshall. So there's where the Marshall comes in. I have a birth date for her at 1725, Nathaniel 1724. And we go back another generation. So this is what? Oh, I've lost count. Help me out here. Okay, this is great, great, great. That's two, three, four. Nathaniel is five. Roswell is six. This Nathaniel is seven. Eight time great grandfather. Henry Barmore, born in New Jersey, um, and then died in Throg's Neck, uh, Westchester, New York, 1704 to 1760. So it predates the Revolutionary War. His wife uh, was Rachel Mead. She was born in Connecticut, um, 1699, passed away in 1768. Now, some of these generations, there are, are more than one spouse. So um, I don't always include all those. Um, so from time to time, there's, there's somebody left out, but it, it's what I make sure I have on my tree are, uh, the two that are supposed to be the parents <laughs> of their kids, right? So that, um, it's the bloodline. Let me go back nine time great grandparents. This is John Barmore. I have a birthday at 1676, passed away in 1714. And I'm trying to remember... Uh, he is, yeah, I mean, I have anything. There we go. I have a baptism with his name in it uh, in Surrey, England. So I believe that John Barmore uh, and maybe his kids, well, no, it said he was, this Henry was born in New Jersey. This is where the Barmores come from, our line anyway, come from England. Uh, to the colonies. I don't have a last name on Grandma Grace. I just have a first name right now. Uh, but 1676 to 1714 is Grandpa John. I've lost count again. Now we're back to William Barmore. 1650. Oh, I take it back. It's William and his, his children. So born in Warwickshire, England, died in New London. 1650 to 1700. So there's Connecticut. Um, and Mary Griswold is the grandmother there. So let me go back. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we're ten generations back. This is my ten time great grandfather. 1650 to 1700. And that's where things stop right now. Um, I do have some lines that go back into the 1400s, uh, but not many. Most of them get into the 1600s, and that's about as far as you can go. So we know that the Barmores um, started in England as far back as we know right now. Came in through, looks like, New Jersey. They moved into Connecticut, New York area. And then the next thing we know, our line is in Indiana. Louisville, um, Kentucky. All right, so that's an overview of the Barmores. Till next time.